Okay, this is the second version study guide video with five words for extra, extra credit if you're listening. So here we go. This one, plug in negative three right there where that X used to be. So that gives me F of negative three equals five times that negative three minus eight. I'm going to use my calculator to times five positive and three negative. You gotta be able to multiply a positive and a negative number. That's gonna give me F of negative three equals negative 15 minus eight. And then using my calculator and switching gears, now I'm adding subtracting rules, that negative 15 minus eight, that's gonna give me negative 23. So I get F of negative three equals negative 23, not positive. I circle that. Next, for this guy, I'm plugging in D. This one has no negatives, but has order of operations. So this one has C of 5 equals 20 plus that 15 times this 5 right here. And then make sure, do not add. Leave that alone. Make sure you do this timesing first or multiplying so that 15 times 5 I get 20 plus and then if I times that correctly or if I use my calculator that gives me 75 and then when I add those up that gives me C of 5 equals 95 first word is surf of course surf all right there we go moving on next problem number two for these guys graphing using only a point or two points what they want you to so this one graph with the y-intercept so the y-intercept of this equation in blue that four i go up or down this y-axis so that first number right here four that's where my first coordinate goes and then from there i use my pencil i look at this negative four number the number in front of x and if I wrote that as a fraction, that's over one. So that tells me from that blue dot, the pattern I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the right one, and then I'm going to go down four from that blue dot. So right one, down four. And of course, for this one, they only want two coordinates. So that's how my graph's going to look. I'm going to make sure I get rid of all my other coordinates. The only two coordinates I'm going to plot are that y-intercept in blue and this x-intercept in red. And then I'm going to take my pencil, my ruler. I'm going to draw a line through those points as neat as I can. And then draw arrows on either side of that to show that that line goes on forever. Knowing that again right here, this is the y-intercept where x is 0. And this is the x-intercept where y is 0. That's something you need to memorize. All right, here we go. Next, for these, graphing and plotting only the solution point. So this 3, first number on the y-axis, and then looking at that number in front of x for this guy, the number in front of x, that missing number is a 1. And if I write that as a fraction, that tells me from that blue point, Every time I go over a grid, I'm going up. So right one, up one, right one, up one. I need to be able to stair step the opposite way too. Left one, down one, left one, down one. Now before I put my line on there, look and graph the second one. So zero five is right here on the Y axis. And that number in front of X, that negative is really negative one. So that written as a fraction, is negative one over one, one to the right, one down, one to the right, one down. And I could see if I was to graph these two lines, they intersect right here at this coordinate, I could see. And that coordinate is one, four, right one, up four. But of course, the instructions on this problem say to only plot the solution point. So I'm going to make sure I erase all of those marks on my computer, clicking. For this, you're using paper and pencil, but you'll be clicking.
every single number, every single coordinate needs to be gone. The only coordinate is going to be right there at over 1, up 4. That's the only one you're going to use, that right 1, up 4 number. So if I look at my graph to get this one right, the only coordinate is going to be right here, the solution coordinate. All right, moving on. Thanks for listening. Second word is froth. Froth. All right, so for this one, moving this up a little bit. I'm looking for my increasing intervals where it's going uphill. So I can see uphill right here from left to right as I go from left to right. Uphill. I'm looking at now my X numbers to show those spots where it starts going uphill. Right here at negative 6 on the X axis, it starts going uphill. And then I can see the other spot where it stops going uphill for this first section is at negative 4. So again, that stretch from negative 6 to negative 4, it's going uphill. I use those numbers and I write it in that pattern with that X in the middle. That's where I get that number right there. That's where the interval where it first started going uphill. And then I could see it's starting right here now at negative 4 and ending at this stretch at that negative 1. So if I use those numbers, that negative 4 and that negative 1, I could see that's this one right here. The other one's not quite. All right, next, I'm looking for decreasing intervals where it's going downhill from left to right. So if I use my pencil, going downhill is this stretch. And then I have another one right here going downhill. I have two downhill stretches. So I can see the first spot, again, where it starts going downhill at that negative one number. And then it ends at this positive one. So if I use that negative one and that one to show where it starts going uphill and where it ends, that's going to be this guy right here. All right, next stretch where it starts going downhill at five and then where that ends going down here at eight. So that's where I'm getting those two numbers, that five and that eight positive. All right, next. They're going to say which of these is true. So all the bad ones in red. This says maximum at 1, 7. That's not good because that's saying that over 1, up 7. That's the highest data point, but that is not because I can see. There it is right there. So that's not true. This says maximum negative 1, down 7. That's right here. And I can see that is not the maximum. This one says Minimum, the minimum at 8, 6 is telling me that if I go right 8 and then up 6 right here, that's the lowest point, but that's not true. This one says the minimum is at 8, negative 6, and I'll show you why that one works. Because if I go right 8 and then down 6, I end up right here at the lowest point. That's the minimum. So since that minimum matches that, that one is correct. The maximum, if I was to look for the maximum on this data, I could write that with my pen. The maximum where it's the highest, that would be at negative 1 up 7 right here at that spot. So know that maximum, minimum. All right, moving on. Third word is dog, dog. All right, domain. Domain is measured from left to right using the X numbers. So if I look, the left spot where this data starts right here with a square bracket is at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7. Though that to the left, those are your negative numbers. Some of you put positive there. So that is square bracket negative 7. And then since that arrow is going off to the right, that is positive infinity. Do not put negative infinity there. That is my domain from left to right. I got a square bracket on that negative 7, rounded bracket on that infinity. If I do range, range is measured from the bottom number to the top. So this arrow 
is going down. So that's negative infinity. There's, there's no bottom to it. So I do rounded negative infinity up to the top part where it stops. And I use the y-axis to count those numbers. So that on that y-axis is 2. So that's where I get that 2 right there, square bracket. This negative 7 I got from the x-axis because I'm going left 7. They don't put those numbers in there. They expect you to know to the left is negative. All right, here we go, moving on. Number seven, this page is the equations page. I'm going to distribute and then combine like terms. This is going to give me negative 15x plus 20. And then right here I got positive 5x equals negative 2x plus 4. Next, I'm going to combine like terms. This negative 15 and this 5. If I know my negative rules, that gives me negative 10x plus that 20 equals negative 2x plus 4. And then right here, it's a variables on both sides. I'm going to start by getting rid of this 20. Then I'm going to get rid of this negative 2x. And then back to the left, I'm going to divide over here. Same thing, same thing every time. So get rid of that plain number by subtracting. Make sure you're subtracting from the 4, not the negative 2x on my terms. That gives me negative 10x equals negative 2x minus 16. Know your negative rules. Over here, I'm going to now add 2x. And then again, knowing my negative rules, that's going to give me negative 8x. And then the last step, division, is tricky because I'm dividing by a negative 8. So one last negative rule. Dividing two negatives gives me x equals positive 2. Keeping my work vertical, straight up and down. I should be able to draw a line through your equals. All right, here we go. Inequalities for this guy. You are doing the opposite. But again, just using this symbol instead of an equal. So the opposite plus 4, subtract 4. Make sure you're actually subtracting. Some of you just left that 13. So that gives you 3x. Don't put an equal there. Don't do that. It's not 3x equal. It's 3x more than. Keep it that direction. And this gives you 9. And now the opposite of times in by 3, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. These cancel away, and then that 9 and that 3 give me x more than 3. That's my answer for that guy right there. All right, for this one, I'm going to have you flip it around. So you write that as 4h plus 28 equals capital P. So you'll solve it like a two-step equation. You're going to subtract that 28 on both sides. Subtract that 28 from P, and that gives you 4H equals P minus 28. And then right there, the opposite of times in by 4, dividing everything by 4, dividing that P by 4, dividing that negative 28 by 4. These cancel away and leave you H all by itself, and that gives me P over 4 minus 7. All right, moving on. Number 10, this one has you look for which one is the function. The first one, look for which one is the good function, which one is good. So good means none of the x numbers repeat. So if I look at this, none of those x numbers repeat. That means it's a function. Don't even look at the other numbers. Just focus on the x numbers. If none of them repeat, it's a function. For this one, if I look at these x numbers, None of these is the same. Those are all different. If I look at this guy, though, this one has an X number show up twice right away with two different numbers. That cannot happen. Can't have the X number show up more than once. This one has the X number show up again way over here. One with a one, one with a three. Can't have that. And then now you need to <clears throat> pick one and explain why it's not a function in a complete sentence. So here I go. 
capital letter, I'm going to say the last set is not a function because an X number gives two different Y numbers. That's the money sentence. Two different Y numbers. And then maybe show me the pair that you're talking about. Show me this six and that one where you have an X give you a one and then another six give you a three. Cannot have that X number six spit out two different Y numbers. All right, make sure you have a period in there, capitalized. For this one, this one what's, which one is not a function? So if I look, all of these X numbers do not repeat. That's a function. All of those X numbers are different. So that means that's a function. If I look at this guy or the table left to right, this is my X value, Y value. None of those repeat. That's a function. I look at this guy though. This is my X number, really. This is my Y number. This one has an X number with two arrows coming out of it. That means you have an X number two paired up with a five, and then you have an X number two paired up with a six. Cannot have the same X number paired up with two different Y numbers. That makes this the bad one out of those three. So you could explain the last one. is not a function and then again use this sentence because an x number gives two different y's numbers i would write that every time that is breaking the function rule and then maybe show me that that two five and that two six coming out of that input output table cannot have that all right moving on number 12 for this guy all you need to do is look at that domain and that domain is at the x numbers so here first x number is three here's a five a seven and an eight i'm just going to list them those four numbers from those dots, from those coordinates, are the X numbers from those. I want you to write the domain, the X numbers. <clears throat> All right, this one. Fourth word is seal. Seal. All right, this one wants the domain left to right of square. That means that's going to be a solid circle. And the arrow is going to the right. Doesn't matter which if it's going up or down, doesn't matter as long as it's going to the right. So if I look at this one, this one on the X axis, it's one, but it's going to the left. So that would be negative infinity to one square. That makes that one bad. This guy starting at one, going to the right, which looks like negative infinity, but nope, that's positive. This is square bracket because it's solid. So there it is. That is Square bracket one, positive infinity rounded. That one matches perfect, even though it looks like it's going down. That's going to the right. All right, this guy starts at zero on the x-axis and then goes to the right, so that does not match. This one starts at zero but has a rounded, and that's not correct either. This one has a open rounded on one so that makes this one no good this guy has one square bracket going to the right one on the x-axis so that one is the second one that's correct those both match one square positive infinity to the right all right moving on 14 this one wants all the words that match this graph so here we go this would not be continuous 
because continuous would be a line. This is dots. So no line or dots. This is dots, discrete. Next, decreasing if it's going downhill from left to right. And I could see if this is going downhill from left to right, decreasing describes this. And then the third one, exponential. I could see it's that curve look. Exponential has that curve. It is definitely exponential. Increasing would be if this was going uphill like this, and that's not good. Linear would mean if it was straight. Linear is straight line. Exponential is curved, so that's not straight. All right, this guy, knowing that for this, if it's positive, it's going to be geometric. If it's negative, going to be arithmetic. Or looking at it a little bit more in detail, this is dividing by 2. 96 divided by 2 is 48, or the way we really write it, times in by a half. So that makes this one for sure geometric. All right, this guy <clears throat> has you adding 13, adding 13 to get less of a negative number. That makes this arithmetic because I'm adding. This one's going to be curvy exponential. This one's going to be straight linear. All right, moving on. Almost done. For this guy. If it has a percent, it's exponential. So first one, look, look for any problem with a percent. If it's a percent, exponential. Put one there. This guy has no percent, just has plus two people. That's just adding two, adding two, adding two. No percent makes number two linear straight line. This one, again, no percent, just a half. That means I'm just adding a half. There's no percent. Since there's no percent, I'm just adding. That's going to be linear. All right, the ones where you got to do a little bit of work, where I'm looking at pattern here, I got one, five, one hour, five, two, nine, three, thirteen. I'm looking at the increase of these numbers, these height mile numbers. I can see from five to nine going up by four. Another going up by four, that makes this straight line linear. If those <clears throat> were not going up by the same amount, like maybe this was going up by five, I would have put that in the neither section. All right, last one, you gotta do a little bit of work. I'm gonna take this $50 and two hours and divide it 50 first, divided by two on my calculator second, gives me $25 for every one hour. I'm gonna now do the other one, $90 in three hours. So if I do $90 and divide it by three hours, if I get the same number, linear. If I get different numbers, neither. So I can see this one is not the same. So since they're not the same, it's not going to be linear. It's going to be neither. And of course, not exponential because there's no percent. All right, last problem, last word. All right, for this, I'm looking at patterns. Patterns in these two numbers right here, where like maybe this is the blue line. This is the red line. Knowing that for this starts out as red is underneath blue. Blue is on top. And then at certain points, that data switches where where now red is on top. The data for red line is on top. That's what we're looking at here. So here we go. Starting at the H of X line, where for this data showing the lower line, the line, oh, that's not the right one. This is showing for this graph, the red line is above because that negative three is more than negative four. So that's starting out like this. And what I mean by that, is on my number line, I know that if I look to the left on my number line, negative three is more than negative four. Any number closer to zero is an actual bigger number. So this one is bigger. The red line is on top of the blue line. If I keep going, the red line is still on top. If I keep going, uh-oh, right here, now 
the blue line has a bigger number. That means there's been a switch right here at this point. My data switched where my red line was higher. The red numbers were bigger. Now my blue night line is bigger. So I'm going to use those numbers to frame where it starts on the X axis. So between negative two and one on the X axis. And I would write that, of course, like this. And then I need to find my second choice. So here I go going down. Now I'm continuing with this blue data higher. This blue data is higher, but then if you know your negative numbers, negative one is closer. So that makes this higher value. And then of course, this one is higher than zero. So the second switch happened right here where one side used to be bigger and then it switched to the other between this one and this two. I use those numbers to kind of frame where that happened. And then I'm looking for the one with the right choice that has both of those, not just one. So I can see B has the one, two, and the negative two, negative one. Some of these are close, but, but you need to have both. All right, the last word is pelican, pelican. Good luck, hopefully this helps.